Five Plus Global, an ecosystem established to create a universal impact in the lives of those we serve. Or Positive Vibration 365 Plus Global Foundation brings together students and mentors to foster empowerment, increase leadership skills, support the development of highly educated and proficient youths, and prepare them to make a difference in their communities. Builderman Foundation serves to fulfill its mandate to empower, develop, support, reculture, restore, rehabilitate, and re-socialize men while helping them to fulfill their God-ordained purpose in the home, work, church, and wider society. Be a part of our other empowerment programs. Register for one of our outstanding and flexible programs at Impact Online Bible Institute, Eobi, where excellence is not on break. Partner with the Women of Excellence, where our ladies are poised to reflect God's design of the virtuous woman or youth in action, which explores real life, real issues, and real solutions for a purposeful life. The Per Clinic team meets weekly to pray, believe God's will, and follow his instructions. Feel free to join us on Monday evenings or join our Friday evening Bible study for a holistic transformational experience in the Word. If you need to speak with a counselor, the Therapeutic Lodge is a safe environment for you to express yourselves while being empowered to become a productive, ethical, and moral member through individual societal contributions. Explore the Couples Corner, featuring or matched and attached series, or join the Juicy Conversations on or Pillow Talk Special, aired weekly. Check out our website, positivevibrationglobal.com, or contact us through the following pages for more details. Remember to like, follow, subscribe, and join the community. Be a part of this thriving ecosystem. Imagine seeing your words come to life. At Reason with Robden, we aren't just publishers. We are the bridge between your words and the world. Whether you are an established author or a newcomer with a story to share, our publishing services are tailored just for you. From meticulous editing to eye-catching cover designs, we are committed to ensure your book stands out in the crowded marketplace. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, Jamaica. Good morning, mm -hmm. K-Man. Good morning, Sikis and Nevis, Barbados, Antigua, Trinidad, and Tobago, Grenada, mm -hmm. British Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, U.S. Good morning, Canada. Good morning, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Alicia. Blessings to you. Good morning to you, Sharice and company. Blessings to all of you connecting with us this morning on Positive Vibrations. So this is the Five Plus Global. Uh, it's our morning's devotion uh, for those of you listening on uh, YouTube, listen and watch it on YouTube and on Facebook. Good morning and blessings to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Those of you who are watching and listening on Caribbean Christian Broadcasting with Pastor G, blessings and good morning to you. Uh, those of you listening on Gospel Exposure, Real People Case Radio, BDM Radio, Ghost Radio, HOD Radio, I Am Jamaica Radio. Good morning to all of you. Good afternoon, UK. It is a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Good afternoon, Africa. Uh, blessings to all of you as we all connect this morning, this afternoon. This evening, I trust that we come with our worship because we know it's not when Lady Alicia starts to sing, but worship is a lifestyle. We come on here with a heart of worship. We come on here with a mindset to give God our best in adoration, our best in praise, our best in commitment to serve. And you know that you serve God uh, by us also serving others. Uh, how are we serving others today? 
uh, let us make a commitment to do right uh, in representing Christ and living a life of, exa of example we, where we take time to be a blessing to somebody else. It may be a word of encouragement, maybe a smile, it may just be present, it may just listening, it may just be you, you know, pointing somebody to something else by a recommendation, whatever it is, let us do so from our hearts. Good morning to you, DJ Apache Finger Radical Praise. Good morning to you. Good morning, Lady Nicola Burnett. Good morning to all of you connecting with us uh, this morning. As you come on in, please be a video evangelist to share the program that somebody will be able to join us over on uh, as we partner together, as we fellowship together, as we give glory to God together, as we just take time to really, you know, let God know that here what we understand it's not us. We understand it's not just the place that we are at. We understand it's not the people around us. More, it's more, even more. Uh, so it is uh, Him and His presence that is with us. God is with you, even if it feels quiet and alone. He is with you. He will not leave you alone, and He has a plan for you uh, to be able to smile and come back to testify that man, God did it again. Good morning to you, Lady Daisy James. Good morning, good morning and blessings to you. As we come, let us come with hearts uh, ready to give thanks, hearts ready to just honor God, uh, hearts ready to give up for best. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people for great, is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. And that's G-O-D gods. <laughs> For all the gods of the nation are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Our God is the living God. Uh, he is the one who creates all things. He's the one who makes things possible. He's the one who knows where we are going. He's the beginning. He's the end. He, listen, he is just God. He, he, he speaks to the word God. Uh, splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe it to the Lord the glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Uh, let us worship uh, the Lord this morning. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be removed. Uh, cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth uh, be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. And we have a song that we sing. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. As we come on, let us rejoice in the Lord uh, today. Lord, we thank you for another beautiful day. We thank you, God, for your love towards us. Your love, uh, God, that is so unconditional that God, even us sometimes, uh, God, we can't fathom uh, it's extinct because it is so great. We thank you, God, this morning for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. It speaks to the fact that, God, you have plans for us to do great things, to create impact, God, to be available for service in today. I pray, God, that as you've given us life today, that, Father, we will live the purpose you've created us, you've preserved us for, to be a part of this plan. I pray, God, this morning that as we go out, uh, God, those uh, who will be at home, those who, who will be going to small groups, those who will be going to the busy centers, that, God, wherever it is that we are, that, Father, we understand that it's not just mere existence, but, God, there is purpose for us being there, and that, God, in that season that you've planted us, uh, there is reason for us God to make a difference. And so I pray, God, as we live worship today, that, Father, our lives will be a difference uh, in the spaces to bring light, to bring peace, to bring a sense uh, of a uh, purpose, not just, God, to us living that purpose that you've called us from work, but to others who will look on and see us, God, be inspired as you convict their hearts, God, to likewise live purpose. I pray, God, that we'll all submit to you, that God will remain teachable people, uh, God, not see ourselves as one who have attained, but understand that, God, 
we are all uh, your children. God, we are all seeking to get to, uh, to that place, uh, God, where we can uh, really see ourselves uh, as uh, that people who have attained. Uh, but until then, we understand that sanctification is a progressive uh, move, that God is a process that we all have to go through. So until we reach the glorification stage, God, I pray, God, that we'll take every step in this process of sanctification humbly. God, we will learn. God, we will see ourselves as people who can fall, people who uh, may fall, but God, that even in the midst that God, through our commitment to you, God, we can turn, we can make it right, and we can, uh, God, make uh, that difference as we go forward. I thank you for what for positive vibration. I thank you, God, for bringing us together. I thank you, God, for the provisions you've made uh, possible as we all come on it day after day, God, to partner together. I pray, God, for the families uh, that have become a part of this ecosystem. I thank you, God, uh, for their lives. I thank you, God, for the relationships. I thank you, God, uh, for the successes. I thank you, God, for the challenges we've experienced. And God, is the blessings uh, from all of them. I pray, God, this morning that as we continue to join, that God, you'll bring comfort, you'll bring peace, you'll bring healing. God, you'll bring, uh, God, uh, that sense, God, of uh, value in each and every one of them, that God, they will know, they'll be assured that God, there is greater that you have for them, that God, they're not less than, but that God, they are royal priests, they are holy nations, they are peculiar people, they are people of a value. I pray God that as we understand who we are, uh, understand that we are yours, understand who you are, God, uh, in the general sense of God, creator, Lord, master, the sovereign one, I pray God that we will give unto you, God, genuine worship. I pray, God, that, Father, it will not be a ritual of doing, uh, but, God, it will be our heart, God, and our commitment, uh, God, to going uh, all the way out, God, to worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. Have your way, God, among us, God, today, uh, on the screen, in the chat, God, in the different places that we go to their prayers. Uh, Sister Alicia prepares to come on as Reverend Jean Fullerton prepares to come on to share as we all, God, fellowship together, that, Father, will be able to say, I have been blessed. Uh, I have been empowered. And God, we are committed to going forth. Uh, God, to live worship better than we did yesterday. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 And amen. Good morning and blessings to you, Lady Kolika Coleman. Good morning, Lady Tidra. Blessings to you. Blessings to all of you. Lady Lola Miller. Blessings to you. Blessings, 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 blessings. As you join, please be a evangelist this morning. Share the program that somebody will be able to join us on this morning. We're talking about responding to God's call to genuine worship this morning. Uh, yesterday, I got the news that, you know, somebody who has been really close to my family just passed and gone uh, is no longer with us. And, you know, <laughs> boy, I tell you, um, the son of the, 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 the deceased came by the house and I was talking to my mom and he came in and he, he was just crying out, and, you know, bawling because his mom is no longer here this morning. There are some of you who may be saying, I don't have this person because you got a death news or, you know, something never got right or, you know, there is a, a sense of emptiness there. Uh, it is hard and we would go through the process of healing, but in the midst of it, God is still a good God. And so let us still trust him and find place in the midst of that, you know, discomfort to give God worship. Uh, because even in those situations, this or God that we know is faithful is still deserving of our worship. So as we worship God together, I pray that no matter what the situation is, even if it is so such a hard knock as the news I got yesterday, um, let us still find a place to say, God, I magnify you. I honor you. I give you praise. Uh, I am committed to a life that is, com that, is, that is centered around giving you glory, where I seek you first and follow uh, your direction and allow you uh, to be known, to be glorified, uh, to be given the best of things that I ever have. Uh, I'm going to be inviting Sister Alicia on this morning. As she comes on, 
let us worship God together as she leads, you know, with the different songs and as she ministers. I pray that our hearts will, you know, become soft <laughs> as we open up ourselves to what God has for us. Uh, blessings to you, Sister Alicia. Welcome on in this morning. And over to you. Hi, morning, sis. Blessings to you and your family. Good morning, Positive Vibration. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's a beautiful Wednesday morning, and we're here once more to honor our King, to worship Him, to lift up His holy name. Amen. So just prepare your hearts this morning and just join with me as we go into a time of worship. Father, we give you praise this morning. We give you honor and we give you glory. And we say thank you this morning, God, for life. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for renewing us this morning. And thank you for this new opportunity, a new day that we can come unto you once more and glorify your name. Come and have your way this morning in this place, Lord. In this line, Lord, you take control and do what only you can do. Thank you, Jesus. For our worship belongs to him. He deserves it. He alone deserves it. And he is worthy of all our prayers this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our worship belongs to you. She belongs to you, Jesus, holder of my soul, keeper of my heart. I adore you. I adore you. My worship belongs. Sing praises to your name, Jesus, your worthy of all praise. I sing praises to your name, Jesus, my worship belongs to you. Take me as a living. Sacrifice, take me as a living sacrifice. Oh, glory belongs to you. Sacrifice, sacrifice, take me as a living sacrifice. I sing praises to your name. Jesus, your worthy your for praise. I sing praises to your name. Jesus, my worship belongs to you. Jesus, I surrender, surrender my heart. To your will, to your way, not my will, but yours be done. I give it all to you, because you gave it all to me. I surrender, surrender my to your will, to your way, I surrender, surrender my heart to your will, to your way, I surrender, 
glory of all praise. I sing praises to your name. Jesus, my worship belongs to you. My worship belongs to you. Hallelujah. Our worship belongs to you this morning, God. It belongs to you. And you are holy. You are holy forever. You are holy. And we honor your name, Lord. Holy forever. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way this morning on this line, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let me tell you about my Jesus this morning. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Whatever your situation is this morning, cry out to him this morning. Lay it at his feet this morning. Allow him to change the situation, change your life, turn it around. Whatever the enemy has planned, he could turn it around for our good. Just trust him this morning. Change. Change today every situation. Let, it, let him change it today. Let him work in your situation today. Let him work in your lives today. In our lives, Father God, have mercy. Give us strength this morning, God, where we need the strength, Lord. Comfort those who need comforting this morning, God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Let your holy fire fill this line this morning. Touch hearts this morning, God. Healing, we thank you for your grace this morning, God. Have your way, have your way and do what only you can do. What only you can do, for you are a way maker. You are a promise keeper. You are light in the darkness this morning. And you are a breath in our lungs this morning and everything that has breath this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. You. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Lord God continue to give us testimony when he makes way when we don't see no way um, possible to be made. He does it and cause us to continue to remain in awe uh, at his awesomeness. Thank you so much, uh, sister. You should have a beautiful, 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 beautiful day. Uh, today, thank you so much for coming on and you know leading worship. Good morning to you, Lady Jenna Pierce. Good morning, Lady Hyleen Soil. Good morning to you, Lady Raquel Wong. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You know, I, I love saying the lady, 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 you know, but I hope I can soon say so. You see, I can call DJ Apache Finger and Sir Derek McFarlane. I want to see some more men coming on, you know. Uh, good morning, Lady Yvonne Omojesu. Blessings to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, good afternoon to all of you connected with us. As you join us, uh, we're talking about the God who makes a way when there is no way. The one who shows us that here, what uh, all things are possible as long as it is according to his will, he will allow it uh, to be done. We're talking about uh, responding to God's call to genuine uh worship. This is quality vibration 365 plus global. If you're joining on Reason with Rob Don on YouTube and on Facebook, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome if you're listening and watching on Caribbean Christian Broadcasting with Pastor G. Uh, welcome on it. Thank you so much for joining us. Those listening on Gospel Exposure, Real People Case Radio, BDM Radio, Growth Radio, HOD Radio, I Am Jamaica Radio. Uh, welcome on it this morning as we uh, just uh, heard uh, Sister Alicia leading uh, praise and worship with us. Uh, we are now going to go into the word. And this morning we have a beautiful uh, person who is going to be joining us on it this morning. Uh, her name is Reverend Jean Fullerton. Um, she will be sharing with us this morning on the theme, Responding to God's Call to Genuine Worship. Now we've been having a really, really good time since Sunday uh, with this theme. Uh, a lot of hearts bawling out, um, but I trust that, you know, it will not just be bawling out for the moment and you feel good and gone by your business and back to the old thing, uh, but that we will really live transformed lives where we live life 
uh, that speaks to worship. So I'm going to be inviting uh, uh, Reverend Jean Fullerton on this one. As you come on in, please feel welcome and also share the program via video Angeles. Hi, Auntie Pam. Welcome. Blessings to you. All of you who have joined us, have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time as we reflect in the word this morning uh, as Rev joins us on his screen. And also take time to share. Lady Andrea reminding us, please like the program as well. Uh, it is also your way of being an evangelist because others will be able to join us on uh, with your likes and your, you know, your interaction uh, this morning. So be an emojiologist. <laughs> as you are a video angelist uh, this morning. Blessings to you. Welcome on to you, uh, Reverend Jean Fullerton. <laughs> You're muted. Good afternoon in some places and good morning in other places. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We thank God for life, thank God for the gift of sleeping, and thank you for the gift of waking up to see this beautiful day, a day filled with infinite possibilities, a day of power and victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so we are thankful to God for his enabling grace with all, this, with all these things that are going on in the world, but we are still here, we are kept by the power of the living God. You know, some people, you uh, they say, uh, I don't have a testimony. But the fact of the matter is that if we are alive, if we have breath in our lungs, uh, we have the activity of our limbs, we are born. There are so many things to be thankful for. We have more to be things to be thankful for than what we need to complain about. Hallelujah. So we are thankful today. And I always, most times, declare every day a thankful day, a day of thanksgiving, because I recognize that thanksgiving is my passport into the heavenlies. It opened the heavens over my head, and I want my heavens to be constantly open. Just throwing this out there. The Bible says in Roman, Romans 1, I think about verse 14, talks about the complainer, the complainer. Uh, if we complain and we are we have ingratitude, the scripture says that we'll have a dark heart. When I discovered that in scripture, I'm telling you, uh, that shook me up a bit. I said, mm -mm, I don't want to have a dark heart. How about you this morning? How about you this morning? Wherever you are, why not lift up your heart to the Lord and tell him thank you in spite of your circumstances, in spite of what you are facing, in spite of what you are seeing Give him thanks this morning. Thank God for this broadcast. Thank you, Lady Danielle. Good morning to my little godson over there, making all that racket over there. I guess he's preaching his own um, sermon and um, doing his own praise and worship. You know, the boy is just um, expressing himself, and we give God praise this morning. So I know that um, with the speakers that comes on 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 this program they are quite eloquent in their speeches and their messages and they go deep into the word to explain the scriptures um so that people can know how to navigate their way through the different um situations in their lives and um you know what god um uses every one of us differently i believe that this is a time when god is saying bring all the anointings the and the gifts together, hallelujah, to create this beautiful um, cake that he wants us all to enjoy. So we all come with our different flavors and we are grateful to God for that. And we respect and honor every gift, every presenter. And presenters, I want to say to you, thank you. You are making a difference in the world. You are shining the light. So as we continue on this journey of... Um, I was speaking about, let me find the topic. <laughs> um, responding, responding to God's call to genuine worship. And so the scripture is um, Isaiah chapter 10, one, sorry, from verse 10 to 20. Verse 10 to 20. And I'm sure um, by now you would have read the scripture um, by now. Hopefully, if you have not, please 
do so. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. Hear the word of the Lord, rulers of Jerusalem, you rulers of Sodom, of another, Sodom. Listen to the law and instruction of our God. You people of another, Gomorrah, what are your multiplied sacrifices to me without your repentance? Says the Lord, I have had enough of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed cattle without your obedience. And I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls or lambs or goats offered without repentance. When you come to me, come to appear before me, who requires this of you, this trampling of my temple by your sinful feet? Do not bring worthless offerings again. Your incense is repulsive to me. Your new moon and Sabbath observances, the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure wickedness. Your sin, your injustice, your wrongdoing, and the squalor of the festive assembly. I hate the hypocrisy of your new moon festivals and your appointed feast. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, pleading for my help, I will hide my face, my eyes from you. Yet even though you offer many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Get your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the ruthless. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the rights of the widow in court. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the best of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Father, bless your word unto our hearts. Glorify Jesus. In, glorify Jesus' name in this place. Amen. Amen. So here is the word of the Lord. Here is the word of the Lord. And we thank the Lord for his word. And so this declaration from um, Isaiah the prophet, it, brings, it, it begins with a serious insult, literally to the nation, calling them spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you know anything about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know what went on down there. But the backbone to that spirit that was manifesting down there in Sodom was a whole spirit of pride uh, where people were doing what, what they thought was right in their own eyes. They would not listen to reason. They had their own ways of doing things. And they lived... The rulers and the people have a solemn like offensiveness to the Lord. And so the Lord describes his displeasure with these people. And he does not call them the sacrifices that may made his sacrifice. He said, they are your sacrifices. What you are doing has nothing to do with me. It's all about you. Oh, I know we like to look uh, back to the old, but let us take a look in our church for a moment. I was just thinking of every year we have all these conventions, these big conferences. We play, pay a lot of money to bring in people to converge in different places. And sometimes when you are through, the only thing that you can recall is that it leaves a hole in your bank account because you've spent so much money to go. And when you come back, you're like, what did happen there? What happened? Why? Because sometimes these conferences, these conventions, these conventions, it's like a theater. It's like a stage. You know, um, you, people come and they act, act. It has nothing to do with God. It is something that we do. And so it must be done. It's on the calendar. But there is no... Uh, movement of God's spirit, no true worship. So there's no true movement of God's spirit. Yes, we do sing some fast songs and some slow songs. And yes, we see emotional reactions many times, but there is no change 
Why? Because the, the, the sacrifices that were offered, it was offered in the flesh. God rejected it. It was their sacrifice, not God's sacrifice. And God did not honor it. And the worship did not leave the room. It went nowhere. And so, yes, the choirs may sing perfectly well and we can applause. And uh, most, and when you look in, in our services and all you see, it's just the applause. It's telling me it's an act because when true worship hits the presence of the Lord and God's glory come down, you can't even stand. Sometimes you have to kneel. You go silent. You go silent. Silence can't say a word, the standing awe of his presence. And I know, Lady Daniel, you were at one place where even your baby was silent, three months old for over 30 minutes. Silent, nobody could speak because God's presence was so strong that we all had to shut up and let God have his way. So, uh, coming back to this, how uh, is Isaiah um, brought the prophetic word um, to the people. And when we look now in our 21st century church, there are so many things that we are seeing. We are seeing honor to the woman of God, honor to the man of God. To honor the man of God, take half an hour. To honor the woman of God, probably take 25 minutes and so forth. And by the time we are through paying homage, to the, the man and the woman of God, there is no place left for God. I was somewhere some years ago, went to minister into another country, and I heard a chair and the roar and the shout, an honest to God. I lift my hands, giving God praise, only to find out that it was not praise and worship to God. It was to a man. I was flabbergasted. I was flabbergasted. You know, so um, when it comes to worship, we need to pay careful attention. The reason why people get off into this kind of worship is because there is a heart condition. There is a heart condition. The heart is far away from the Lord. The heart desires carnality and not God. The heart desires pleasure and not the things of the Lord. Because worship belongs to only God Almighty and he alone deserves it. There is no other entity, no other God or figment of, or figment of man's imagination that they create to be God um, that deserve worship, but the Almighty God, the Lord of hosts, who is with us, our savior, our healer, our deliverer. And so I believe that this is the season that the Lord is calling us back to true worship, to true worship, where our worship is not an act anymore, but it is something that comes from the heart. It's the life that we live. How can we say we worship God, but then we don't love our brothers and our sisters? How can we say we worship God, but then we don't speak to our family members, we don't speak to anybody, or we speak to them with insult and, and so forth? How can we say we worship God, and then humanity does not see the love of God shining through us? I come back to my first statement. It's a heart condition. And when our heart is out of line with the things of God, the sacrifices that we offer, it means absolutely nothing to the Lord. Might as well you shut up and sit down. And I know that we relegate worship to only when we come to church and we sing our songs and we lift our hands and so forth. But true worship is, who do I submit to? Whose voice do I listen who do I obey? That's what it is. And so if you are serving God and you say you are serving God and you're worshiping God, but then you're in disobedience to his word, you're not worshiping God. You are worshiping another God, right? 
you 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 have you 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 have another spirit that is not of the Lord because true worship comes from a place of obedience of submission to the one true and the living God. Isn't it amazing how many times we have offered to God things that he did not ask us for? Many times. I've been into services where I see the power of God start to move. And instead of people humbling themselves and repenting, they start to, they start to throw money on the altar. When that's not what God is calling for. God is calling for your heart to be broken in his presence. And so once the carnality filled to Luca, the money starts, all of a sudden the service turns into something else. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one in here who have seen that before. I guess we have, we have seen it all. So as we come before the presence of the Lord, what has he asked us for? Hallelujah. And what he has asked us for, we need to carry those things. We need to come with those things and come with the right attitude and the right motive as to why we come to worship God. I know um, there are a lot of cultures and lots of festivals and so forth that we celebrate. It has nothing to do with God because people's heart are far away from him. And if God does not take center stage, if he's not the reason for these um, services, these celebrations that we claim to be having, then it is unacceptable in God's sight. Hallelujah. When God calls us into repentance, he this is what he requires from us in verse 16. He says, first make watch to make yourselves clean. There's a cleansing of the heart that needs to happen. We need to repent in obvious ways. Our lives need to be cleaned up. We need to stop thinking that we continue, we can continue to practice sin and still remain in God's favor. The Bible says, must we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. It cannot continue to happen. God does not want our worship if it does not come from a place of brokenness, our repentant heart. Hallelujah. So God is calling us the body of Christ. I believe that this is a time that there needs to be a cleansing and a washing and a purging of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People don't want to hear that they need to turn anymore. People want to hear that God is going to bless them. You don't need to hear that you're already blessed. That's your state. But we need to understand that we need to turn. We need to change our ways of thinking. We have to change our ways of doing things. We, we, our motive need to change. Worship services, these are not just somewhere that we go for entertainment. We claim that we are serving a God, a holy God, a righteous God, a truthful God. And so when we worship him, Jesus says in John 4 to the woman that the time is, is coming and now is when God is searching, seeking for true worshipers and those who worship him must, it's not maybe, must, the master himself, the word himself is speaking to the woman, must worship him in spirit and in truth, not your soulish realm, not carnality, not fleshly. Yeah, I just saw um, on a conference just probably a couple of days ago where uh, this man was doing something on a pole and carrying on in the house of God and call that worship. God is not interested in those perversions and those are abominations in the house of the Lord. It's disrespectful and it's dishonoring to God. And God is not pleased with those kind of situations. We can talk about it because we see playing our um, play out openly before us. So we can talk about it and say this ought not to be so. It ought not to be so. Where did that thinking come from? That came from a perverted place. 
Where do you see people dancing and pose? In nightclubs, yeah? We are perversion in the den of perversion. Why do we want to bring that in the house of God? Is this what we think um, God, God's worship has come down to? No, a thousand times, no. God requires from, for us to come humbly, to remove the evil deeds from before our eyes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Remove the evil deeds. We don't need anybody to point out our evil deeds. We know them because we are the ones that are doing them. We know them. We don't need to read out people's sin. People know their sin. They know what they need to repent from. They know what they need to change. Hallelujah. Because the, the spirit of conviction. But then some people are convicted, but they are not convinced that they need to change. They make excuses every day and give you a lame excuse. I'm only human. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You have a spirit in you. There's a spirit in man. There's a spirit in man. Hallelujah. You have the spirit of God in you that can lead you and guide you into all truth. So you are not only human. Hallelujah. The spirit in God in you can lead you so that your humanity does not uh, um, override the leading of his Holy Spirit from leading you into righteousness and doing that which is right in his sight. Amen. Hallelujah. So remove the evil deeds. Remove the evil of our deeds. You know, sometimes we, good, we do good deeds, but within the good deeds, there is evil. Because there is nothing wrong in having a convention or a conference. But what is the motive behind it? Is it to bring people together to worship God in spirit and in truth? Or is it to raise some money? Is it to raise some money for the building project or to raise some money for something else? What is it for? And so even in what seems like good deeds, there can be evil, evil within the framework of that. And that's why we need to remove the evil out of our deeds. Remove the evil out of the things that we do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Repentance is not simply the removing of evil deeds. Repentance means that after the deeds are passed, we go back and clean up the residual evil and damage that we have caused. Hallelujah. We make things right again. Hallelujah. Jesus. That is why Zacchaeus, uh, he says in Luke 19, hallelujah. He did not only just stop the evil deeds. He cleaned up the evil of his deeds. He decides from the heart to repay fourfold anyone whom he has defrauded. Ah, this is the cleaning up of the evil of our deeds that God is looking for. God wants to see that the hearts that try to clean the evil we have done. So you could say that Zacchaeus was a true worshiper. He was a true worshiper. He learned what it, what, what, what it is to truly worship God. He had defrauded people. And so he recognized, no, I have to pay this back. I have to give this money back and I have to put some interest on it. Sometimes we hurt people and we come to church, see them walk past them and still lift in hands, shout hallelujah. Can I say to you, shut up and fix it? Because the Bible tells you, if you come to, to offer your offering and you know that somebody has heart against you, you should go and find the person, reconcile and come back. This is how you offer your sacrifice. You offer your sacrifice in righteousness to the Lord. And these are the sacrifices that the Lord will accept. If, for example, you made plan with somebody to go somewhere. Let's bring it down to this now. Somewhere. And you can't make it. But then you refuse to even send the person a message to say, I'm sorry but I can't make it today. But then you come to church and you see the person. You totally ignore the situation. You don't apologize. You say nothing. But then you are lifting up holy hands and praising God. Put your hand down. Put it down. Because you are not right. 
you needed to apologize to the individual how can you lift up your hand ah praising god but then you you cause your brother or your sister to be unable to lift their hands because what you did has offended and affected them it may sound oh that's not a big deal it is a big deal it is a big deal and it is not right so just simple things simple things that we do can affect our worship i remember one time i i told somebody that i will call you back and i went to speak at the church and the person was there there was no way i could go up to that pulpit and don't I, and i had to go to the person and said you know what i'm so sorry i didn't even remember that i was supposed to call you back until i saw you here a while ago i am so sorry i had to set myself free because what i had made a promise it was not deliberate that i didn't make it it just that it slipped in my mind but the spirit of god brought it back to me how would i stand before the congregation and preach and look this person straight in the face i don't know for you i can't, I can't do that so i had to fix it before i entered the pulpit to preach god's word and if you know me well i'll just say it if if, if it was a situation where i was unable to speak to the individual before i i've, I've got in the pulpit and trust me i would have done it publicly that's how God deals with me. Yes. So we just want to be in a position where we can hear the spirit of God so that our worship will not be tainted. Yes. We can't be having fun. Say we are enjoying God, but we are our, we ourselves is grieving grief to other people so that they find it hard to lift their hand to worship. Because worship is not just about you. Worship is about your brother and your sister as well. Do you help them in their worship? Or are you anti-worship in their life so that they cannot lift their hands and give the Lord praise? God is not pleased with those kind of sacrifices. Let us fix it today in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, if you're offering your gift at the altar, remember... Again, let me repeat the scripture in Matthew 20, in Matthew 5. Yeah? If you're offering your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go find your brother. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. God wants repentance-driven worship. God wants our hearts to desire to, to desire clean hearts and clean hands. So that when we lift our hands, we, we lift our hands in confidence that the Lord has washed our hands with his blood. He wants us to abandon the old life. And so the Lord instructs people to stop doing what they're doing. Stop the old lifestyle. Uh, somebody may say, well, I have given my life to God. Well, if you have given your life to God, let the fruit be shown because the Bible says it is by your fruit that you are known. So if you have given your life to God and you claim to be a worshiper, but you are still out there doing stuff, it's telling me that you are not committed. You are not committed. You have messed up your covenant with God. Not God messing it up with you. You have messed it up with him because uh, when you worship God, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. You must obey his word. You must walk in his precepts. But, you know, when I look at how Jesus culminates um, the, the, the commandments and said, uh, it's in this, simply this, love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your mind, yes, and your neighbor as yourself. That culminates true worship, true worship, hallelujah. Praise ye the name of the Lord. So let us de de abandon the old, old wineskin, old way of living. So that when we come to God, we worship him in spirit and in truth. 
that worship will become our lifestyle. It's not when we go to church and put on an act. It will be in our worship will be in the grocery store. Do I have to lift my hands in the grocery store and shout hallelujah? No, it's how I respond to the customer beside me. It's how I respond to the person that may probably come and stand um, ahead of me, even though I was in the queue before the person, because it happens. Hallelujah. It's the way how you respond. Who are you submitted to? When you are submitted to the Lord, when you are a true worshiper, you will exhibit the spirit of excellence. The spirit of excellence, this excellent spirit. Where in spite of everything, you will always be, you will always have self-control. You will always be, you will be always able to overcome. You won't speak out of turn with your mouth. You won't rail on a person. You won't be in rage. You won't try to tear anybody up because you carry this excellent spirit in you. It is an excellent spirit that caused Daniel uh, to stay in um, Babylon. Yes. And even though he was under trial and he was tested in all fronts, yet Daniel did not um, move away from the true and living God. He was a true worshiper. Why? He obeyed the God that he served. He was in a strange land. They even changed his name. But guess what? Daniel may have said, you can change my name all you want, but you cannot change who I am. You cannot change my character. I'm indeed a true worshiper. This is how we do it. In my kingdom, we pray three times a day. We pray to Elohim, the almighty God, the one who makes heaven and earth. He's the one that we pay homage to. And even though um, the rule was set, if for 30 days anybody worship any other God, they will be thrown into the dens of land. The true worshiper did not deviate. He did not leave his position. He stood his ground. Hallelujah. He had this excellent spirit. And guess what? This excellent spirit brought him before the king and made him governor. Put him above the rest. So to be a true worshiper, the spirit of excellence must rest on you. I often hear um, Sir Rob then said that excellence is not on break. No, not at all. It does not take break with us as people of faith. Hallelujah. In order to worship God in spirit and in truth, we must have truth. We must have the spirit of excellence upon us. And so we exhibit this excellence everywhere we go, in every sphere of our life. Hallelujah. And so God commands us to move away from the old life to develop a new mindset, to learn to do good, to adopt a new way of thinking, not conforming our minds to the patterns of this world, setting new objectives in our lives and have a complete change of priorities so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness. The scriptures commands us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. As people of faith, we must change our pursuit from worldly things to godly things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Change our, what, are, what drives us? What are we longing for? What are we going after? What, what is there pulling your strings? What, what turns you on? What, what is it? What, what gets you going? It should only be the spirit of the Lord. You should be in control of everything else except the Holy Spirit. He's supposed to be the driver of your life because he's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to cause your behavior to be right. So that when you, um, you know, sometimes even on the street, driving, Driving in London is crazy, absolutely crazy. You have to be saved for real and be a true worshiper to drive in London because it is so crazy, yes? And sometimes um, I'm around people that are driving and sometimes I'm in the vehicle and I see how, you know, when somebody bad drive them, what comes out of their mouth, you know? And so we have to pay 
attention because I take a lot of Ubers. So I know. Sometimes they swear. Because guess what? That's where the heart is. That's where the heart is. And so that's what comes out of their mouth. As people of faith, things just don't slip out of our mouth. No. It's not supposed to. And then so, oh my God, I'm so sorry. No. And that's why we have to keep checking our heart all the time. Checking the pulse of our heart. How is it beating? And to what rhythm is it beating? So, Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we don't want to speak anything that is going to discredit the name of the Lord and to cause our worship to the Almighty God to be questioned. So, let us, as people of faith, seek after God. Have the right posture. The right posture is to seek at, after God. Be at his feet. At his feet. I often said it. People are fighting for all kinds of positions, yeah? But guess what? I discovered something. I remember the Lord said to me some years ago, at my feet, at his feet, is the most high place. And that is resident in my heart. And then I thought of what Jesus said to Mary about Mary in John 11. He says, Martha, you are concerned about everything. Yeah? Things are, yeah, you're concerned about maybe this, that, whatever. Because she was complaining. Send Mary to come and help me in the kitchen. He said, but guess what? He said this of Mary. But Mary has chosen the better part. And it shall not be taken away from her. When you seek the feet of Jesus, not his hand. Because many times we are just seeking his hands because we want things. But when you stay at his feet, when you stay at his feet, that position will not be taken away from you. Nobody can move you out of that position. You are there to stay. And that is the position that will take you from here to eternity. At his feet is the most high place. So the Lord's invitation to us, he's saying, because you see, God is ready to meet us with grace and mercy. He says, come, there's an invitation this afternoon or this morning, wherever you are, I'm listening from. Come, let us reason together. Come here, come here. Let's talk about this. Let's dialogue about this. Let's reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like Scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. This is not an aggressive call to a legal matter. This is a compassionate call. So let us resolve our differences. Let us settle the matter. Why? There is hope hope but the hope is found in god's way not our way our sins are like blood stain scarlet blood stain but they can be made white as snow and we know that it's through the blood isn't it amazing that um blood is supposed to be red yeah when we see blood outside it's red right and our sins are blood stained looking scarlet looking but the red blood is able to cleanse and wash away those things that look like blood stain in our lives and make our lives as white as snow we can be made pure we can be made clean 
where we have to present our blood red hands to God, our blood red hearts to God eh? in confession and repentance. Give him the stained heart. Give him the bloody hands. Give it to him. You Do you know that your hand is connected to your heart? Give it to him and he will use his blood and cleanse away the stench of these things. He will wash you and make you clean so that your worship will be acceptable unto him. Hallelujah. He says, if you do this, if you're willing to do it his way, he says, ah, uh, you will eat the you 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 will eat the best of the land. Provision will be made for you. You won't get the what left. You will get the first crop. You will get the best of the land. Hallelujah. If you receive, if you believe, if you walk in obedience, you will receive life. You will receive blessings. But he says, if you refuse, if you rebel, then you have received condemnation, death and judgment. It's a choice. What is your decision today? You have to choose, people of God, who you will serve. Because I cannot assume that because you're a member of a church that you are serving God. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. If God be God, serve him. You need to understand that your destiny hangs on your decision. Your worship hangs on your decision. True worship hangs on your decision to serve the true and the living God. Hallelujah. How can you be a true worshiper? Yet, somebody offended you for so long and you cannot let it go. As a matter of fact, let me talk to you on the line right now. Somebody offended you long time. Long, 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 long time. Years ago. And you pretend as if you have forgiven, but truly you have not forgiven. And you are on this broadcast. I'm saying to you today to let it go because... You are hindering your own blessings from the Lord. Unforgiveness, it is said, is like you drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. When there is bitterness and anger and unforgiveness towards a person, then you said, oh, I won't, they won't apologize. They don't have to apologize. Just make the decision. I'm a true worshiper. I want to worship God in spirit and in truth. I don't want this to hinder my sacrifice. I don't want this to hinder my worship before the true and the living God. What they did to you was wrong. And we are not giving them a pass either. It was wrong. But they will have to answer to God for what they did. But hey, sister, hey, look here. Let it go. It's not worth it. And those things that are, are happening in your body, it's because of that situation. Let it go and watch your healing spring forth like this. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I just had to throw that in there. So, let us release ourselves today from the stubbornness and the self-will and the pride. Oh, we don't want to have the spirit of Sodom. And Gomaro, that spirit of pride, because it is pride that causes people to get off into all sorts. It's a spirit of pride. We don't want to be, be a part of that. I know some people, when they hear that, oh, that's not in my space. But if you have pride where you are stubborn and you're unwilling to let go, to forgive, to be obedient to the word of God, then that spirit is in you. It, it's in you. They were stubborn down there in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. They didn't listen. They didn't obey. They wanted to do things their way. 
And that's why they ended up being destroyed. God's mercy and God's grace is available for us today. They didn't accept it because they didn't want to. But God is throwing his grace at us, to, at us today. Will you obey his voice? Will you come broken before his presence? God, God's appeal is not unreasonable. God is asking us to be open and to be responsive to him. Do you know that when you speak of worship, worship speaks of intimacy. If you are married on here, you know how it is when you are married to a person. Yeah? Say you get married. You go for the honeymoon. Hmm? Well, I'm sorry for you. If everything on you at that wedding was fake. Because this is going to determine. The intimacy is going to determine if this man or this woman is going to stay with you. And that's why you must come to God real. So when you go home and you start to take all the fake lashes and the hair and the makeup and the shapewear and the different things that hold you up and make you so beautiful, he or she is going to see that. But the thing about God is that when you come to him, yeah, and you expose yourself to him in worship, it doesn't matter what is hanging or what is loose. He doesn't care. He just wants for you to be real in his presence. To be real. The person that you marry may be disappointed and walk away and say, I didn't expect this. I thought you were a size 10. I didn't realize that you were 16 because you held it so good in that wedding dress, you know, or that suit. But God, he will never, ever turn his back upon you when you're brought to him, the uncomely parts, the uncomely parts. And that's why we come to him open and naked. And in your relationship with people, be open. Don't make up anything. Just be real. So that nobody will be um, shocked. Yes? Or be disappointed. They may be pleasantly surprised. Amen. So, let us um, come before the Lord for real. Yes? And let us ask him to cleanse our heart. You know, people of God, li listen. Listen. Every one of us, we've experienced issues in this life. I'm not going to sit on here and pretend that I was this way all the time. I was not. It's a process. We grow through things and we learn through things. Okay? But there comes a time when you have to say enough is enough. What is this doing for me? What benefit am I getting from this? You've been carrying this burden from for so long. Jesus is saying to you today, come broken and lay that thing on him. And he will give you the rest that you will need. He's calling us to cease from the old life. Yes, old way of living. Be responsive to him. Learn the new mind. Set new objectives, new priorities. Seek it, <clears throat> sorry, with all of our heart. This is what makes worship acceptable to God. Hallelujah. The worship cannot be accepted if there is no repentance, if there is no brokenness. When David sinned against the Lord, he cried out, Lord, against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. When we hurt one another, we are doing it to the Lord. We are hurting him. Hallelujah. And so today, as we are here this afternoon or this morning for whatever place you're watching from, I pray that your heart will be open to receive from the Lord. He will wash you. He will cleanse you. There is no condemnation here. Absolutely no condemnation. 
no condemnation. God wants you well. He wants you whole. He wants you to be a true worshiper. He wants to accept your sacrifices that you bring before him. Huh? The sacrifice must be holy and acceptable in his sight. And he will not turn you away. You see, the thing is, God has not rejected you, but he will reject the sacrifice. He will reject the worship. He's saying, come. Come, let's talk about it. And that's what I love about God. You can go and have a dialogue with him about anything. Anything at all, no matter what the subject is. You don't need to be afraid of coming to God. Because guess what? God already knows everything. But hey, he's waiting on you to come to him, to be real. And I pray today that this will be your day. This is the beginning of a new season in your life. The turning of the page, turning of the corner. Hallelujah. A new chapter in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. As you humble yourself and you seek the Lord so that when you offer your sacrifice, your sacrifice will be offered in righteousness. And when it is offered in righteousness, it will be acceptable unto the Lord. I am well I'm cognizant of the fact that many sacrifices, it doesn't matter how big it is, that God turns it away because some things are for show. It does not come from a, a true place of worship and honor to the Lord. Who do we pay homage to? Who do we reverence? Who do we honor? Who do we lift above everything else? Who is our first call, port of call, when we need to call? It should be God in every area. It should be him first. Somebody may say, well, that make you um, act like you're deep and heavy. No, you're not deep and heavy. You're just being real. Hallelujah. With God doing the right thing, putting the right protocols in place and doing the right thing so that you can experience what God has promised for you. Because everything that God has promised for you, it's already there. It's already done. But sometimes because of our heart condition, we don't receive because our worship it's tainted. It's not coming from the right place. Uh, but today, 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 the Bible says, if you will hear the spirit of the Lord, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Do not try to reason out. Why should I let this go? Why should I do this? Why should that be that? I don't want to be a doormat for anybody. No, you're not going to be a doormat for anybody. You are serving God. And it requires sometimes that you give up your right for peace sake. Because you are serving, you are worshiping the true and the living God. And guess what? When you put God first in everything, when you worship him from a true place, he will fight your battles. You, He is a vindicator. You don't need to defend yourself. You don't need to fight in the battle. All you need to do is submit to his leading and let him lead you. And I'm going to read you this scripture from Romans 12 verse 1 to 2, as it relates to worship. I believe this is one of the most powerful um, scriptures on worship in the Bible. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for those that are watching this morning, those that are listening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that each one of us, every one of us, oh God, will come to this place of brokenness, of submission, of submitting our will 
to you of renewing our minds as offering our bodies on that altar as a living sacrifice for God. Now coming to you with oblation and dead sacrifices, things that you reject and, and, and things that cause a, um, a, a revolt in your spirit. Mighty God, we pray today in Jesus' name that you will, oh my God, strengthen our hearts, oh God. Give us the strength to say no to the world and yes to you, even um, when we are being ridiculed, that we will obey you at all cost in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to be true worshipers, to seek your faith your face, to always be at your feet, Lord God, because we he want to hear, well done when this is all over. Deliver us from vain worship, false worship, hallelujah, worship of man, worship of, of organization, worship of people, worship of things. Remove idolatry from our heart today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and cause us to look up to you, the true and the living God, the God who desires worship the god who 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 deserves worship the only god that is to be worshiped because he is worthy the only god who is worth worship because he is worthy so father god have your way in our lives lord and i pray god that every spirit of condemnation will be lifted up off your people in the name of jesus christ so that they can come before you not feeling condemned uh, but feeling cleansed and washed in your blood because you said for them to come and let and reason together and you oh god hallelujah will cause them to enjoy the good of the land. So Father God, we thank you for what you are doing in the lives of your people in the mighty name of Jesus through these broadcasts every day in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. I pray today that these few words may add, add value to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and change your whole perspective as it relates to your worship and how you respond to the God that you serve. Remember, he loves you. He's not waiting with a stick to knock you on the head. He's waiting with his arms wide open for you to come on in. He wants to embrace you because he loves you so much. He loves all of us in spite of us. So uh, God bless you. It was nice serving you today in Jesus' name. Over now to Lady Daniel in the name of Jesus. Amen responding to God's call to genuine worship. You know, Rev, a lot of persons are going to be going out and on the road, somebody going to try to bad drive them. You know? <laughs> I wonder if we'll show that we are living worship in the way that we'll respond in the situation. And listen, if I'm in the car, I will say, see the signs at 30, see the signs at 40, how we respond with all these things in our ears. Um, do we have this calm sense uh, where we don't react and go become angered and go look up? But you know, we we are we are we are committed to living worship in the sense that our response will cause even if the other person wanted to start an argument, there will be peace in the whole process because of how you you would have dealt with the situation. Let us not curse. Let us not go out there and be rude. Let us not go out there and, you know, cause fights, you know, because of how we feel bad about the situation. But let us respond in love. Let us be an example in the situation that the person will look in their life and say, man, thank you so much for the way you're responding. Sometimes you don't know how your response can change somebody's whole perspective um, on it doing things. Thank you so much, um, Rev, for coming and sharing this one. It's Wednesday, and man, she 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 has a very busy schedule, you know. Um, but um, we are grateful for the fact that she took the time out to come on and to be with us this morning. Blessings to uh, Sister Alicia who came on earlier. And remember, worship did not stop when she stopped ministering um, through a song. Worship not going to stop when PV closes. But worship is our life as believers. How we act at home, how we act in the kitchen when the pressure cooker something fly off. <laughs> 
how we act on the road, how we act in the workplace when we feel like the boss is not treating us, you know, with the best of treatment that they can give, how we respond when somebody was supposed to come through first at a particular time and the person and the whole deal fell through. Let us live worship today. Let us respond saying yes, full submission, all humility, uh, ready to walk in obedience uh, to God as we go through. Uh, let us present, and I just love that scripture. If you know me, you know I love that, um, those verses uh, in, in Romans. Let us be the sacrifice, presenting ourselves uh, ready to serve, ready to be uh, available as the Lord directs us. Have for yourself a blessed tabulous day. Put all of your processes in the hands of the Lord because once we do that, absolutely everything, not some things, but absolutely everything will be copacetic. Thank you so much to all of you who have listened and watched on Reason with Rob Dunn on YouTube and on Facebook, Cabin Christian Broadcasting with Pastor D, Gospel Exposure, Real People, KS Radio, BDM Radio, Growth Radio, HOD Radio, I Am Jamaica Radio. Uh, God bless you. Have a beautiful, 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 beautiful day. Imagine seeing your words come to life. At Reason with Robden, we aren't just publishers. We are the bridge between your words and the world. Whether you are an established author or a newcomer with a story to share, our publishing services are tailored just for you. From meticulous editing to eye-catching cover designs, we are committed to ensure your book stands out in the crowded marketplace. 